Keys to the Commonwealth, a podcast where we share the real stories of local community members who are using real estate to build personal wealth, along with tips and tricks from professionals across the industry. And now, your host, Landry Fields. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Keys to the Commonwealth podcast. Uh, I'm excited this week. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Had my eye on uh, the pulse as far as what uh, Mr. Andrew Wilson here has been doing for a little bit now, and uh, things have changed. So it actually worked out some perfect timing as we're going to have him on today with the brand new national real estate uh, brokerage. And so uh, I'll let him talk a little bit more about that here shortly. But uh, without further ado, Andrew, drop, hop back in the DeLorean and let me yeah, kind of explain how you got into real estate or your background in general. Absolutely. Well, Landry, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to come on the show. I've been watching it for quite a while. And, um, you know, my, my, uh, uh, intro into real estate uh, was a client. Um, I moved back to Lexington in 2017. Okay. And uh, from where? Uh, from Washington D.C. by way of Oregon. Okay. Um, so we we had a brief stint in D.C. for seven months. My wife did some contract work there, and it was not the place for for us. <laughs> and, did you have the beard there while you were there? Yeah. The, I was uh, say, there's probably not a lot of beards, is there? Not a lot of beards there. There's a lot of BMWs, and not that there's anything wrong with BMWs. Yeah. Love them, but um, I, I had moved. Um, uh, with my wife from a town of 3000 people to a, a city of 6 million, you know, yeah. so it was definitely a different experience, uh, for us. Um, and, um, I also went from, you know, one of the best jobs that I've ever had. I was a golf caddy in, in, at band and dunes, um, for a little over eight years. Yeah. And, um, then I went to the most highly educated populace in the world and it was incredibly hard to get, um, you know, a decent job. So I ended up, caddy in there as well at congressional. Yeah. Um, but when we, when we decided to come back, it was basically my wife, Rachel had a job opportunity with UK healthcare. Okay. And as soon as she got that, we said, let's, let's go. We're starting a family. Let's get back closer to home. And, um, we started looking at houses in October, uh, 2017. And I loved it. I, my real estate agent probably didn't love that we looked at 30 houses, but I, you know, <laughs> in, in retrospect, right. It's like, I was, yeah, we are our worst clients. Right. Um, but she was, um, uh, gracious and, and she had a lot of patience with us. And I think that that was the reason why, um, you know, I thought to enter into the field, she said, Hey, you'd be good at this. Uh, you should go to this career night. Um, at, uh, it was Keller Williams, Greater Lexington at that time. Yeah. Um, and I did, and, and, and I met some really great people and I jumped into it and that's that, you know, what was your background really before that? So I, I always worked in a, a customer service facing position. Um, you know, my first real job, I guess you would say I worked at singular wireless here in Lexington, oh, yeah. uh, on Sir Barton. Um, I had a wonderful time there. I learned the sales process there. Saying, learning the sales process is huge. Yeah, it was, you know, the it was retail. So it was a little bit more captive of an audience. And plus, everybody was wanting a phone at that time. Yeah. My uh, timeline for uh, the mobile sales uh, industry was the, I left as soon as the iPhone, the first iPhone came out. And so I sold a lot of Blackberries, yeah. Motorola, Razors. Um, <laughs> Palm Pilots and things like that. And uh, I left there uh, midway through 2007 and uh, moved to Cincinnati, uh, got a job in finance, uh, worked for Central States Financial Group in Cincinnati, uh, Elm Street, um, Inquirer Building, downtown, drove through the cut in the hill every day. And I just, I wasn't fulfilled um, in, in that role. Um, you know, I was 26 at the time yeah. and I was like, what am I doing? Like I, I haven't explored, I haven't done anything. And so, um, I decided to move out West and start working on golf courses, which was crazy to think for some, but I, okay. it was something I had to do and, and it, it changed my life for the better. Yeah. Um, I grew up, I, um, you know, met a lot of really cool people. I wasn't Andrew Wilson from Maysville who went to UK, who now lived in Northern Kentucky. I was, they didn't know who I was. I yeah. was nobody. So I got to develop, um, a sense of the person who I wanted to be. Yeah. And I, um, became a golf caddy, which was a, it's a, an absolute service position where 
golf is extremely hard. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, helping people navigate um, a golf course was really fun for me because you get, you get a lot of joy out of it. And most of the time people are extremely happy, right? They're on vacation. Yeah. But every once in a while golf is golf and, you know, there's a club toss into the woods or there's a, you know, a few ex <laughs> expletives and things like that. But, um, yeah, from, um, I, I went to park city, Utah, which is absolutely gorgeous yeah. place, red rocks everywhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, a short season though, because it gets cold and that's the ski resort, um, Right. town. So, um, I went to Ponte Vedra beach and caddied at TPC sawgrass, um, which was awesome. Um, got to play and work on those courses. And then, um, I ended up out in Oregon, um, just through word of mouth. And, um, I fell in love with it. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine myself working anywhere else. Once I stepped foot on that property, mm -hmm. I've said it before is it, it had a, um, spiritual and mythical property to it where, you know, all the golf courses are along a hundred foot cliff on the Pacific ocean and, um, it's links golf too. So there's not, it's not like, yeah, it's just natural. Yeah. Uh, they didn't move a bunch of dirt. They didn't do any of that. They just seeded it and feeded it. And then, you know, but for instance, they, they had, um, four golf courses when I started there and they have a sixth one coming and they have two new additional par threes. Um, but it was a town of 3000 people and they did 140,000 rounds of golf a year. Oh my gosh. So, and also there's no golf carts. So, um, there's a caddy program and there was about four, 400 of us. So you walk in at six in the morning and you wait for your seven o'clock tea time. You work all day, you carry two bags, you come in, you eat lunch, you go back out, you go home, you eat dinner, you go to sleep because you are dead. I mean, you're tired. And so I probably worked uh, about 300 out of 365 days, which gave you um, quite a bit of an experience on what weather is like on the Oregon coast. Yeah. And it can get pretty gnarly. Um, you know, 50 mile an hour winds can gust, you know, 75. Um, Cape Arago is an hour south of there. It's the westernmost point of the continental United States, and they get 100 mile an hours all the time. Um, so, um, People are out there. There's nowhere else to go. So they're like, we're playing. Yeah. And there's no trees or hardly any trees. So they don't need to be fearful of trees falling on you. So they, they let you play. And it's it's kind of wild. Have, so, any of the, have any of the PGA events played there? So they don't have PGA events there. They actually have USGA events. Okay. And so they had the U.S. Amateur there, uh, I believe, two or maybe three years ago now. Gotcha. Um, so that's the biggest event that they've ever held. They've had um, – uh, four ball events, uh, the women's U S, uh, amateur, uh, things like that. So it's mostly geared towards, um, United States golf association and amateur events. Yeah. So I'm always kicking myself as back in college. I went to, uh, uh on a trip to Northern Ireland, oh. ended up uh, being at Newcastle, Northern Ireland yes. and didn't realize that's kind of like a bit of a golf Mecca, like where Rory McIlroy grew yep. up kind of like playing stuff like that. I'm yep. just kicking myself. If I didn't know this and didn't have clubs with me or realized I should have played. It's, but well, so it's a Bandon Ireland is the sister city of Bandon, Oregon, okay. which is why they named it that. And yep. it was established by, you know, the Irish. Um, funny enough, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Kieran McMonagall, he won the 1997 uh, Irish amateur and he's a caddy at, at Bandon Dunes. Okay. So you get all walks of life out there. You get um, uh, Tim Tucker, a friend of mine, he caddied for DeChambeau for years. Yeah, before yeah. He, um, um, who else? There's lots of guys that just get plucked, you know, because sure. a pro comes out and they're like, man, this guy's good. And you want to come on tour? And they're like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Sorry. I don't know if I can do that. Probably not. Um, heck yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, man, it's, it's, um, they have, um, they have a really good group of people and they treat them extremely well. Mm -hmm. And, um, I couldn't do it anymore physically. Um, Surprised I've ever heard of this. It's, a, it's the number one golf resort in North America. Um, and um, it's, it was founded by Mike Kaiser, who is a uh, – he made all of his um, business and money in American Greeting Card Company, recycled yeah, yeah. recycle greeting yeah, cards. Yeah. And um, he just does a ton of um, 
philanthropy work uh, in the community for, you know, Oregon watershed cleans up the beaches. Um, they have the Evans scholar program for uh, high school students at the uh, local high school to earn a full ride scholarship yeah. to any state institution. Um, so they've done it right, you know, and it's, um, it's definitely a labor of, of love. Um, so I'm actually going out there August. Um, I'm really excited. Um, okay. so, um, I'm going to go out there with my wife and three small children. There you go. And so that's going to be an event of getting, what, what uh, ages are I got three. Do you really? So I've got a three-year-old, a uh, little girl, yep. uh, and I have, uh, twin boys who are, um, what is today? Is it the, uh, the 11th? 11th. So they'll be 18 months on the 14th. Oh, okay. So yeah. Real twin, little. Yeah. My little, little. youngest is three. So. Really? Okay. Well, it's, we just exited the diaper phase for the yes, first time in eight years. Yes. And I, it's, it's been awesome. Happy, happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've got the, the first one is, um, successful. Um, yeah. and, um, it was, it was hard. Um, but yeah, we've, I don't know how many diapers we've changed, but yeah. you know, quite a few. So there you go. Yeah. So, uh, switching back in general to, uh, obviously now being in Lexington for the yeah. last, you know, six years or so, I mean, so you were, um, with some different brokerages prior, um, and made a name for yourself for sure. Cause obviously I'd seen your name around, we had communicated a bit, but yeah, then, uh, it worked out perfect timing as, uh, you, so you branched off and now co-founded or founded. Yeah, this is all, this is all, uh, me founded, uh, okay. national real estate. Um, yep. I have a team of, of wonderful people surrounding me that serve in roles of principal broker, director of marketing, director of communications. Yeah. Um, director of operations, all the directorships. Yep. So they, they let me do the, um, forward facing, the talking, the recruiting, the retention and the vision. And they say, go away when there's any sort of like organizational, um, need, because that's not my strong yeah. suit. Um, I mean, that's the big, if we can pause right there on that yeah. second, like being a, an entrepreneur or leader, I think the, the quicker you can identify, Hey, these are where I struggle and I need to yeah. Give this to somebody else who can do this better than I can. The quick, better well, things can move forward. I, I see that you know the delegate and elevate philosophy is. Um, I know that these people are going to do this role and this job at a far higher success level than I am. Yeah. And um, anybody that 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 says that they're um, you know self made, there might be some people who are more self made than others, um, but nobody does it alone. Yeah. Um, and I'm also a firm believer. Um, and not ever micromanaging people. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll check in with them. What do you need from me? Because right. I can help you, but I know that you got this. So what can I, uh, take off your plate? Do you need to hire somebody now? You know, yeah. is it, um, is it a position where, you know, and a lot of that comes from, I think my, my wife is in, um, uh, IO psychology. So she's organizational. And she goes into these different departments, um, for example, like the Food and Drug Administration or NASA or uh, the New York Steel Labor Union. Um, and she talks to these people in these offices and she says, what's what's going on? Why, what's, why is performance down? And they'll say, well, they fired Joe and Sue and I've been doing their job for three years and they haven't given me a raise. You know, so yeah. it's it is. Um, for whatever reason, they listen to her. Um, you know, she has the education and credentials to back up what she says. But it's so like the counselor for businesses. It, it that, is. You know, they need a it, third party. She is. Them. She is the champion of the employee, um, which she finds uh, a lot of gra uh, you know gratitude yeah. in. Um, but the micromanaging, it does it does work in certain places. I get that, but it's not my philosophy. It's not something that I'm ever going to adopt. So. Um, yeah, national real estate, um, came about pretty, um, kind of fast and slow. Um, you know, we had other opportunities, um, you know, that presented themselves over the last six years, but, yeah. um, this was uh, something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and, uh, the people in my camp and corner said, you got to do it by yourself. You just got to go out there and, and, um, you know, take ownership of it and believe in yourself and then go out and do it and then surround yourself with the the right people. You'll be fine. So, yeah. Yeah. And which, I mean, that's kind of what I did in some ways too. And at the same time, it can be kind of a lonely road in some respect because you like, uh, so it's been helpful for me. And I think a lot of people could identify this with their 
you know, self-made in their business or whatnot, but right. it's like finding those other peers because you're on an island in a bit and finding those other peers outside of those circles or in yeah. other places that, you know, I've got agency owners that uh, I know I, uh, I owe a ton to, you know, they're yeah. a different part of the country, but like that, Guaranteed. I know I can pick up a phone, call them any point in time and they're like, well, Hey, here, what do you need help with? And so, and that's a mentorship role, yeah. right? And, yeah. and so that was given to me freely when I was a new agent and I still call those people Yeah. and it's, they don't care that I'm in a different company or this, that, and the other, we've developed this relationship. Um, you know, if they call me and need something, I'm there. Yeah. Um, and that's because they helped me get my start. Um, so, I mean, you know, shout out to them. I won't, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I went to the top producers when I was new. I said, do you need help? And, uh, what can I do? And they all said, yes, like they're so busy and they can't do this, that, and the other. So I made, you know, I paid the bills by going on showings and covering closings yeah. and, just opening doors, driving to Richmond, driving to Georgetown, driving to Harrodsburg, et cetera. Yeah. And when I see an agent like that now, I just instantly just want to be around them because it, you know, they've got the drive yeah. and can't teach, drive. can't teach it. And, but the opportunity will come to them. Yeah. And then, so if we keep creating that, you know, um, safe haven for mentorship and that safe haven for, you know, opportunity to arrive, um, and they're ready for it, yeah. then that's huge. And I think that builds a better agent. So hundred percent. I mean, so as far as national goes, I mean, how have you set it up differently than, you know, things in the past or other places you've been or so forth, or what was your intentions on as far as some of those differences being? Yeah. So, um, it's, it's, we simplified, uh, everything. Um, we are a flat fee office. Uh, we have three available, uh, plans where you can pay your cap up front if you're a, a 12 plus transaction, um, uh, producer. And then if you're a, a mid-level producer, like you do less than 12, mm -hmm. um, you can pay a monthly fee and then pay a flat fee uh, per transaction of $500. Gotcha. Uh, new agents, um, they do have to go through a mentorship program with a tenured agent. Um, and we're selective on who those mentors can be. Um, so it's got to be somebody that is a capping agent, somebody that's been in the uh, business for, you know, three, four plus years, something like that. Um, and has the intention of actually doing the work to provide mentorship. Uh, we don't just want somebody sitting back and collecting a check, you know? Yeah. Um, but our, our motto, uh, I guess is to, um, become, um, a, a group or a collective of local, um, uh, involved agents in the community. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't care if you sell five houses or 500, doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, be a good person, um, support your community. And, uh, we're not really, I, I guess, focused on being the leader in the sales, you know, race. Um, but we want, uh, great customer service, uh, lifelong clients. And, uh, we, we teach that philosophy. Uh, we reiterate that philosophy and we think that that's sustainable for the, the long term. Yeah. Um, where you don't have to go out and chase new leads. You can, get referrals from family and friends, your sphere of influence. Um, As we both know, referrals are always the best. They're the best. best. Type of client. Well, and, and so, um, you know, interestingly enough with, with Andrew, um, I sold his mother's house. We found that out. I don't know if I told you that. Mm -hmm. So, um, a friend of mine, uh, Andrew, is, my business partner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this was before, you know, he was, had any interest in getting licensed and, um, uh, one of my good friends that I grew up with and went to camp with and on the summers, uh, Jane Miller, um, <laughs> she was like, Hey, can you help me in Lexington? She's in Louisville. Yeah. I was like, of course I send her stuff. She sends me stuff. That's a relationship that's, you know, uh, been pretty strong the last couple, three, four years. And, she, and I looked at the last name and I was like, huh? I was like, I, I think I know, you know, so-and-so. And I knew her niece. Yeah. And, and then when I was interviewing Andrew, uh, I, I was, um, it's like, that's a, that's a name. Are you related to so-and-so? He was yeah. like, yeah, it's my cousin. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, cousin. yeah, you sold my mom's house. I was like, holy, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a small world, right? Yeah. I always say it's the biggest small town in America. It, I mean, like, it really I don't is. know you, you, you probably do type of thing or vice versa. Well, it was, uh, she was probably the easiest client in the world. Um, 
she listened uh, to yeah. me. I listened to her, and and that is where I think the you know the magic. She lended herself to my expertise, and I lended myself to her needs. Yeah, right. And then that everything else post that is going to be smooth sailing. You're always going to have something that pops up, like a negotiation or a, a repair or something like that. But yeah. that stuff's manageable. Um, and having just gone through my own move uh literally in the last couple of weeks i mean it's yeah. just it's never an easy like it, even if it's the smoothest transaction that that's not I mean, maybe, maybe not yeah. even a cash thing that happened over the course of seven days with an empty house maybe that's the best type of thing yeah. but i don't know it's yeah. always there's always just stuff it's always a process it's never uh, there's always emotion tied to it type of a thing in a, in a lot of ways and i think you know, uh yeah there's there's a anxiety or a stress factor involved even if it's not like extreme it can be um it builds because you you have a process, right? Yeah. Where you have a 30 to 45 day window of opportunity or time. And the closer it gets to the closing table, I mean, you have the goal, right? So it's like you're, you're the closer you get to it, the more anxiety can come up. I had an example. Um, I sold a house for a, um, a repeat client of mine who um, lived in this house for 40 plus years. Oh man. And so, I mean, he's, he's been every single Christmas he's had for the past 40 years. He's, he saw his kids raised. He's uh, played with his grandkids in the backyard and it started getting closer and closer. And it was nothing about negotiations, repairs, or uh, anything like that. It was, I'm leaving my house. I'm going to a different chapter of my life, downsizing, moving from Nicholasville to Georgetown. Um, and yeah, there were all good reasons because he's going to be closer to his grandchildren but it was still emotional. Oh yeah. And so the ability to be able to um, not be so buttoned up and, um, you know, by the book at that, at that moment, um, I think that that is a, a benefit for uh, the relationship to continue in the future and, and to create the experience that's going to be better for them. So, yeah. And taking the transactional aspect away from it. That's the thing. That's exactly right. We, we preach that. And I, I stole that from Ricky Carruth. It's nothing relationships <laughs> over transactions. Yeah. Right. Um, he stole it from somebody else. I'm convinced. So everything uh, just compounds it's, on itself. It's all Music just done, compounds on right? itself, et cetera. Right. It, but, but when I heard him say that the first time I was like, that's it. That's, that's the, um, you know, um, when I had my exit interview at my first brokerage, um, they didn't know that's what it was. And, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I had been interviewing other brokerages, you sure. know, so I figured I'd interview with them too. And, uh, he said, Hey, you had a great year. How much did you do in volume? I said, 7 million. He said, how do we get you to 10? I said, I don't care. Like, I, I mean, that'd be cool. Like I yeah. would appreciate that. Um, but I want to, um, do the same thing I'm doing, do it at a higher level. I want to go home and be with my family for bedtime, bath time, story time, yep. all that. And, um, and so, uh, the next year I sold eight and a half and I, um, probably sold like five or six less houses. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Right. When we say five or six less houses, I mean, quantify that a little bit just for yeah. somebody that's not in it like what is one what is the average t obviously it's vastly different per client but on average what would you think i got a client the amount of time obviously that's different than covid times when sure things were everything like that. 24 7 um yeah so um five or six less houses in in my opinion is um probably two to three months worth of uh activity okay um so if you have if you sell six houses and you do it in three months for me, that's the perfect formula because mm -hmm. I can have two sets of clients and it could be a buy sell. So it could literally be three transactions or sure. four, Oh yeah, but two sets of clients per month to me is the magic number. Um, you know, it still leaves me time to go show other property or, um, give a referral to somebody who has, you know, maybe nothing on their plate and can handle, mm -hmm. you know, more. Um, but if you say, um, I can close six transactions a month. I look at you and I think that's amazing. Um, I can't. Yeah. So, um, and, and to each their own, right? Like I know guys that sell 60 houses a year and they're savages. They do it all by themselves too. They don't even have like an assistant. Like, man, y'all are crazy. Um, Cause they, I mean, the last thing I want to do when I get home is yeah. do paperwork. And so that was my first hire. I, I hired a transaction coordinator best decision of my life. Um, 
it let me be with my family for $200 or $250 a transaction. Best money I've ever spent. Yeah. And it helped me scale at a level that was far greater than the, the payment that I was putting in. Well, that let me sell five less houses. Of course, the increase in, um, you know, cost of a home helped that, right? Sure, sure. And COVID and the boom definitely helped that too. So I think, I think that real estate agents um, need to look into um, where they're selling houses. Uh-huh. Um, and if, if you feel uncomfortable at a certain price point, you need to dive into it. Um, I was told early on as a new agent that I wasn't supposed to be hosting open houses for four five and $600,000 houses. I was like, you're, that's dumb. He was like, no, you need to be doing 200, 250. I'm like, no. I'm pretty sure I if sell. selling sunsets doing it for yeah. $5 million houses. Yeah. You, doesn't mean you can't do it for. <laughs> yeah. So tell me it can't be done. Right. And then maybe that's the clue. Or maybe that's the the tip for yeah. what you actually should be doing. Yeah. Um, but when I started hosting uh, new construction open houses at a four hundred thousand dollar price point, in my best year ever. Yeah. And um, also the location four hundred five hundred nine, four hundred five one one. They sell the most houses. All right. So maybe you should do that instead of the one seven, or also maybe where you live too. Right. Yeah. Um, market farm. My uh, my director of uh, um, uh, compliance, Patrick Pearson, joined a bowling league when he first started, and he sold like ten houses from a bowling league that he's been in for six years. He was like, and he he posted the other day, or he sent a group message, and it, the dude's bowling like a two sixty. <laughs> so it's like, be a better bowler, <laughs> sell more houses, and but what it is, it is it's you need to be involved in the community. Yeah. And, and if you are, um, we see a lot of success with, um, teachers, um, uh, firemen, Mm -hmm. police officers, nurses, things like that, because they have this network of people, um, that, oh, you're a real estate agent. You're mine now. You're my real estate agent and, um, see a lot of success there. And they're also people who are, you know, extremely, uh, well-respected, well-trusted. They also stick together. So like if one firefighter doesn't have his license and another does, they're probably going to go to him or her. Yeah. And, you know, things like that. I I always say like, I mean, people do business with uh, people in two two different ways, meaning like they will go and do business with that person because they've been referred to that person or they know that person. So referral or the second because they see their face or name or whatever plastered everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And so then eventually, you know, that's more of the, the just map market the crap out of it until somebody kind of calls you for something. So if those are your, those are your basically your two ways. And if it's something that's in between there, it's not usually going to work, but the relationship being the easiest one of them all uh, to make to compound on itself. In my opinion, I do think that both serve a purpose. Mm-hmm. I, I won't say that, that the, the self promotion is, is a bad thing because Obviously, it works. It's we we live in America, right? Yep. Um, and so, your business with no Facebook, yeah, or Facebook uh, page. You're like, yeah. is this what? a real business? Yeah, I always look. I look yeah. at Google reviews or Facebook reviews or yeah. things like that, and and then I'll go maybe to, hey, do you know somebody that does this? And it seems like, especially you know, in your field and mine, we probably know a guy, right, yeah. that does this, or like if you need a plumber, electrician, etc. We know that guy. Um, but we, what did we have? We had, um, <laughs> we had a, a sound in the wall, um, in the ceiling. I was like, uh, we have mice, like, who do I call? And so I put it on Facebook, boom. And everybody recommended like this person, this person, this person. Yeah. I found the person from Facebook, right? Yeah. A recommendation. And they came out it wasn't mice. It was a flying squirrel, um, which okay. I, didn't, I didn't know existed in okay. Kentucky, but apparently they do. <laughs> um, he assured me. Um, uh, trifecta wildlife services. They were fantastic. Uh, sealed up everything, caught the, uh, flying squirrel, two of them actually, and assured me that they were taken to a nice farm and, and released, (laughs) which they, they weren't, but, um, yeah. So promotion, um, and, uh, 
you know, compared to sphere referral, sphere referral, a little bit easier. Yeah. But uh, promotion, I've, I've witnessed it um, outward facing. Uh, I get more referrals from California, Texas, um, Chicago. I, I think I, I sold five houses in 2022 to Californians out of the 24 houses that I sold total. So, and, and not that we go super deep on that, but just kind of the last topic here is more as like uh, not the market itself. I mean, and, but with, to that right. point, I mean, it, it still seems like people are moving to Kentucky. They are. And that's not necessarily slowing down any. I don't see it slowing down. And I do see, um, you know, the people who, the properties, the A properties, mm-hmm. um, the ones that you look at on Zillow or a realtor and you say, oh, that's nice. Those are still getting multiple offers. Um, and those are still getting purchased with cash. Yeah. Um, so it becomes a more hyper competitive, uh, market, but you know, the median, um, has slowed down or it becomes more of a negotiation. Yeah. But yes, I see people and with my agents too, um, because we pay out referrals, right? So we see that and we know I may not be in your dot loop, you know, seeing that you're selling to a Californian, but I can see that you paid out the 25% to the California brokerage. Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the percentage of it, but it's, it's an active market. It really is. And when so. you stop and think about just the, uh, you know, not getting into politics, love, hate, whatever, as far as some of the government in Kentucky, but right. uh, there's a lot of jobs moving here from the, you know, the, the, the bat- battery plants, you yes. got Toyota opening up the first EV right. one, like, well, I mean, those are all positive things. Yes, whether, they are. No matter which side of the, you know, you, but you stand kind of a thing. So uh, I, I, it's only going to continue, I think. You know, I, some, where did you grow up? Here. Here in yeah. Lexington? Or, or surrounding counties. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in Maysville and then and I went to school here, class of 05. And I was sitting there thinking like, yeah. how different does Lexington look now than 05? And it's it's oh, yeah. vastly I mean, different. The campus we went to is like yes. not the same. It's campus not the same at campus. All. Well, my our uh, either. I was no in, one went downtown unless you were going no, to the basketball game. Or yes, I, well, I was in K one, so yeah. that's gone. Yep. Um, and uh, <laughs> now probably I'm, for the better. Yeah, for the better. I mean, that was that was like my. Um, I think my dad was in K one too. Yeah, yeah. So like, that's uh, crazy. Yeah. Right. Um, but now you look around at the 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 restaurants, the nightlife, the dormitories, the uh, options for entertainment and mm-hmm. it's it's promising and i th- i feel like um with what's on the horizon we have um a lot more to look forward to yeah yeah 100 percent. i mean you got to you know the new uh hotel that just same opened yep. up on manchester and you're like it's gorgeous. Wait, what that's they in have lexington a, they have a great fried bologna sandwich too by the way i had it for really? breakfast yeah i don't know why but it was on the breakfast menu <laughs> It was delicious. So, okay. um, but yeah, um, I need to take Rachel out there for a date night and go up on the rooftop. You gotta have our uh, reservations for that, though. Do I you? Think, don't you? I better. I, think, I don't know. I think I've heard you do, but well, don't so just don't assume and so ruin it. I want to let me give her a referral. Yeah, we went to Lockbox um, the other night. We celebrated yeah. our seven year anniversary, and it was a dining experience. And I'm not like, you know, one to like know or say like what's like a really awesome restaurant i just know what tastes good yeah but man the food looked like art the whole vibe was super chill the service was excellent and um i would go back again and again so if anybody wants a really good date night go to lockbox okay. Lex. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, so it's dope to do it's awesome of course i just moved to woodford county so there's yeah. a lot of places there i still need to um, hit up too go to midway go to heirloom good friend of mine okay. and their family own that. that one um it's delicious Favorite um, place is Wallace Station. Oh, yeah. As far How as, can you beat oh, it? That's just my go-to for sure. So um, what's the other one that Weta owns? Um, uh, you got Zim's. You got um, you got Smithtown Seafood. You got Windy little, Corner. Yeah, that's that's one. Yeah, yeah. So I went – when I, when we first moved back um, or when we were thinking about moving back, you know, we, we'd go in there and, and Joe B would be sitting in there having breakfast. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Rachel, it's Joe B. And she's like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, yeah, you're from <laughs> Oregon. Like, you know, but it was like, you know, that's Kentucky to me. Yeah. Is, is you know, that sort of uh, food fair, um, the culture, the community that we have here, I think is uh, unmatched. Um, and I'm sure you would echo this in that. It took me traveling outside of Kentucky more yes. to realize all of this. That's a, a hundred percent. There's a, 
a book of uh, poems that I have. It's called On Homesickness, and it's a, about just that. It's um, it took leaving Kentucky to well, what's the old adage? Is like I've never met a man who's out lit from Kentucky that didn't want to go back or something. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's um there's a special um aura or um spirit about this yeah. state and especially this region central yeah. kentucky that is um uh, it's incredible like people it, are starting to take my notice. daily drive now i just get to drive past the horse farms oh, and, different, yeah. and the you know the four plank fences i'm like this is never going to get old no it won't and, and and you can see the um tenant farmer's house or you could see the 30 million dollar mansion from the emirate of Dubai or yeah. UAE or something like that that owns all the horse farms, but yeah. but seeing the horses out in the field at sunrise sunset, man, it doesn't get old. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I'm so grateful for having a little a little bit of that uh, pie yeah. and that I can see from my new house type of thing in some respects, which is why Love we it. we're like we got to do it type of yeah. thing. Uh, but hey, I want to keep you, Andrew. I appreciate no, listen, you coming on the show. I really um, appreciate excited you. to see what you all are doing at National Real Estate. Well, I uh, I look forward to it. Um, National Real Estate KY dot com. Yep. Um, you can call me eight five nine three hundred fourteen fifteen if you ever want to talk about what we're doing, and we'd love to have you. So Perfect. Thank you so much, Landry. Appreciate you coming yeah. on. Awesome. Talk to you. See you. And we'll see everybody back here on next week's episode of Coming One. Thanks. To learn more about this podcast, visit our page at keys to the Commonwealth dot com. To connect with Landry regarding insuring your investment portfolio, email Landry at NovaInsuranceGroup.com or call 859-687-2004.